it's just so crazy being a prostitute and i'm not trying to glorify prostitution but see these prostitutes they are human beings too hi guys and welcome back to my youtube channel my name is uche and if this is your first time on this channel or your returning viewer you're highly welcome for this video i'm going to be reviewing the book on black sister street by chica unigui this book tells the story of four young women we have um cc ama joyce and ify so these four women they come from nigeria to antwerp a city in belgium and why they came to the city was actually for prostitution but uh one of the characters that is joyce she didn't know that she was actually going to belgium for prostitution so it was when she got there that it dawned on her that okay this is what she is there to do the basis for this um story is the death of one of these young women and um, that is cc so um it starts with uh, the death of cc and while these three other women who live in the same house do the same kind of job but they don't really know much about each other and they've lived together for a long time but when one of them dies they begin to open up to each other so there's this um, bond that begins to form um, amongst the three of them and this happens when they begin to share their stories during the time when they were mourning one of um, the girls who died and that was CC and guys when they began to open up on their stories it just was not see eh? you see prostitutes and you just um, name and shame them and think oh they are the scum of the earth and they are deserving of nothing good but the thing is i just love the way this author just goes to the origin and just tells us the story of the circumstances that led to them actually leaving their country to belgium a white man's country they being blacks to prostitute themselves for money of course most prostitute or every prostitute sells her body for money but guys when you when um they began to talk about their stories it just oh my god it was just shocking and what is even more shocking is the fact that this author actually did her research so from what she said in her acknowledgement um she actually interviewed some prostitutes so i'm sure um the stories that this prostitute told are actually gave flesh to uh, this full story that she had to write and one of my least favorite characters when i started reading the book is actually um, ama i didn't like ama at first and that was because i felt um her character was um short of being mean she was rude i didn't like the way she spoke but when it came for her to tell her own story in fact i was like please if your outburst is the way you're going to just let off steam and you know ease your pain by all means keep shouting keep cursing keep swearing guys at the age of eight she was raped by um by someone she thought was her father in fact in her mind this man is her dad and on her eighth birthday he comes into her room and he rapes her and this rape is not just uh, a one-time thing it continues up to i think when she was um, about a teenager and it's so crazy because what we are made to believe um in the book how um amma's father amma's father's character was made uh, was made out to be he was um, a clergy in the church so he was in fact assistant pastor kind of he was so keen about things of god and the way people dressed i would say he was a religious fanatic and he goes to do this to someone um, who is his child and as the book progresses it was revealed that um, he wasn't actually her father um, the mom was actually pregnant with her and um, this um, I've even forgotten what it was I think her brother something I've forgotten what he was referred to as he took Amma's mother in with the pregnancy and he fathered the child and yes this is a good thing to do he tried but for him to turn back and start raping this child so it was just so crazy when it became revealed and so like i said before these women they share their stories and when it comes to if it's done to share her own story if it was 
I would say a victim of circumstance too. Losing a mom at um, at a tender age, and her father was not always around to monitor what she was doing. So hers is a case of statutory rape. Yes. So um, she lost her virginity to a much older man when she was 16 years old and she got pregnant by this man and he abandons her and even when she went to his house to show the man, oh, okay, this is the child that I got pregnant with, his wife chases her out in the most humiliating way possible and um, she said to take care of this child on her own and then we moved to Joyce. Um, Joyce's story is... It's quite crazy. So Joyce is not actually in Nigeria. She was born in Sudan and with the war, her parents were killed, her brother was killed and she was gang raped. God, I could not, oh my God. I was reading this on the public transport and when I read that part, I, in fact, my eyes were watering. The, the way, oh my God, the emotions, they were just so raw. I, oh my God, I felt, God, I, I can't even describe what I felt reading that part. I was so, I was so sad. And to think that that happened to someone, you know, oh my God. <sighs> Let me calm down with a bit. And so, um, she was the only one left in her family and she uh, made it to um, a refugee camp and there she meets um, a nigerian soldier an Igbo nigerian soldier um polycap and you know they start a relationship by then she had grown so um they start a relationship and he brings her to nigeria and i was thinking that okay even though um polycap coming into her life and you know with this relationship stuff I was thinking, okay, it's not a bit too early. I, I would need her to just settle down with her life, you know, have a direction in her life. But when Polycap came along, I was like, fine, okay, it's good. And then she moves to him to Lagos and they were living together like a couple. They were doing everything together as a couple. And she was even thinking of settling down with him. Her focus is just one direction. And um, he starts being shady and the bombshell he just drops was that um, he's Igbo being the first son. He cannot marry a foreigner, so he has to marry an Igbo lady. And I'm like, I don't understand. And so how he um, disposes of her was to um, was to take her to um, Ogadele. So for these four women, they share one thing in common, and that is um, they have the same pimp, and this pimp goes by the name Ogadele. So this Ogadele was in charge of um, recruiting them and, you know, paying um, all the expenses um, that was involved in sending them out to the country. Polycap takes um, Joyce, who we later know uh, a real name to be Oleg. He takes her to um, Ogadele and, you know, they just tell her that, oh, she was going outside the country to be a nanny. And that was what she felt in her own mind. But when she comes to um, Belgium, she sees that it's actually a different thing. It was actually prostitution she was going there for. And the only thing that Polycap did for her that made Joyce's situation better than the other girls um, in Belgium was that he footed all the expenses um, that would have made her indebted to Ogadele. So what she just had to do um, in Belgium was just to work and um, keep her own money for herself. And um, it's so crazy when this about this uh, prostitution thing. I don't even know if I will even call it human trafficking. But this prostitution stuff is so crazy because these um, women, yes, they get moved from um, Nigeria to another country, that's to Belgium, as the case is in this story. And they have to work their asses off to um, to pay off their debt. And this debt is supposed to be payable within um, five years depending um just depending on how hard working you are but there's a time frame of five years so you have to keep sleeping with men for a number of five years before you can pay off your debt and it's so crazy that when they get to this foreign country their um their international passport is taken away from them so this way you cannot run away like you just have to be with your passport so if you want to get your passport back you work to pay um, 
to pay them off or to pay them what you owe them and then you have your freedom guys so when we get to um cc story from the beginning of the book you know that oh okay cc actually died it's just this thing hanging over your head that oh cc actually died but we get to see um cc story being told when she was alive and what actually brought about her going to belgium in the first place so cc is actually a graduate so her parents sent her to school she was she graduated from school and um being an only child of her parents so her parents just have this hope on her like she's just their only hope she's the hope to um, bring them out from poverty there's just this responsibility on her shoulder so she just has to succeed like she just has to succeed because she has um, a family her parents looking up to her to um you know to move them from this poverty to um, a better place she had this boyfriend who was not even faring better and he was a struggling teacher he just had awards to his name and there was no money so a chance meeting with um Ogadele makes her to decide to um travel out of the country guys travel to belgium to begin prostituting and in her mind she's thinking oh it's going to be an easy thing but when our first experience as a prostitute was um described in the book when it was told in the book it was i i felt so sorry for her it was cringe worthy and oh god guys this oh my when god. these girls are being described um as prostitutes you know when their kind of work their line of job is being explained it just brings to the fore that before these women became prostitutes before they moved to this line of work they're actually first innocent so they are all victims of circumstances and it just goes to the underlying factor in this nigerian society i can't say for the um, african society at large but in this nigerian society you know people just see um when they move out of the country when they go to these foreign countries it's just like a ticket to a better life so i know sometimes it's been said that oh people just think when they go to london or when they go to america they pluck money from the streets and people just when people go to these foreign countries they do all sorts of jobs just to make ends meet and prostitution is one of them in the case of these girls and i would still say they are all just victims of circumstances like if they had a better option i'm sure they will quit this prostitution but now their hands are even tight as the case of these girls their hands are even tight they cannot leave until they paid up their debt in full and so um what actually led to the death of cc was uh she wanted out of the game like she wanted out from this ki kind of work she wanted um a freedom she fell in love with um uh, a foreigner and he he knew the kind of job she was doing and he wanted her to leave he was willing to take care of her he just wanted to be with her and settle with her and this actually led to sissy's death and yes even though from the beginning of the book um sissy's death was always something that was talked about but when she actually died i didn't see it coming i was thinking okay maybe um the author talking about Cece's death was something that was going to be changed at the end of the day. Maybe she wasn't actually killed or maybe she didn't actually die. But when she was killed, God, it just, it felt, I felt so sad. Like, it just, in fact, I felt sorrowful. And I love the fact that the author incorporated Cece's spirit in it. So, um, so, it didn't just end with Cece's death. Her spirit actually came out to see the circumstances that led to her death, to see who killed her, and to look at her parents. And it's just so crazy that Cece actually died at the time when things were beginning to look up for her parents. Like she was already sending more money home. And you know, she was just one or two steps away from fulfilling her parents' dreams. And it was just it was just so sorrowful. She was the only child of her parents. So now her parents they don't have any children left. And they are old already no children no money and at the end of the book there was this statement that actually that gave me um buchi emecheta vibes buchi emecheta is um when it comes to african literature or um 
books talking about uh, women, lending a voice to women. Buchi Emecheta is an OG, God rest her soul. Um, the ending part of this book, it gave me Buchi Emecheta vibes. I'll read an excerpt from the book and if it gives you Buchi Emecheta's vibes, just let me know in the comment section down below. So it says, for Sisi was not the sort to forgive, not even in death. So it just um, brought my mind back to um, Nuego in Joys of Motherhood by Buchi Mecheta. When Nuego was being um, talked about after she had died and how she was a wicked chi, and even when um, women begged her for children, she wouldn't budge. So it just gave me that kind of vibes. This book, it just... It just gives you first-hand information, sort of, of how um, this um, prostitution works for women who um, leave their home country to these foreign countries to prostitute themselves. So it just like gives you the manual, okay, this is what it actually entails. And it brings to mind um, a recent movie that came out towards the end of 2020. Um, it's actually a Nigerian movie, Oloture, starring Sharon Oja. I would put on Black Sister Street by Chika Onigwe and I will bring this Olotue side by side and they will actually match. They would actually match because it was just the same thing. So if this movie is saying this thing and um, this book is saying this same thing, they are talking about the same issue of prostitution and what it entails and the hazards. It's so crazy that, you know, um, CC dies and nobody is actually making that much effort to um, to investigate this death and to see what actually caused it. It just goes to say like in the line of this prostitution, if you die, like we've had so many stories even for people who operate as prostitutes in Nigeria, they're not even outside the country so they call it runs or it could be prostitution or runs, any name that is given. There are hazards. Some of them are being used for money rituals. Some of them, they are just killed by cycles. It's just so crazy being a prostitute. And I'm not trying to glorify prostitution, but see, these prostitutes, they are human beings too. So they, there's this humanity that they share with us too. They are not supernatural. In as much as society condemns this thing, but it just goes to look at the fact that there's a reason why things happen. There's a reason why they choose this um, this part of life. And yes, some of you might say, yeah, but they can do this, but they can do that. But what of some of them that do not have any option? Like Joyce, that didn't even know she was going outside the country to prostitute herself. The, the person that she fell in love with, her boyfriend, actually shipped her off just because he didn't want to marry her. Just imagine. So guys, this book is actually a very wonderful read. Like, I love this book so much that I'm going to give it my best read of 2020. This book was just... This book carried me all along from the very beginning to the end. There was not a dull moment. And funny enough, I was suffering a reading slump at the time when I was reading this book. Like, I had this bad reading slump. It caught me so bad. The reading slump was so bad that... I didn't even want to read anything. I wasn't feeling like to read anything. So there, it, there was no option. It was not an option of me starting with another book to see if I would get back into it. No, I think at that point, maybe I just reached my quota of reading and I needed to just free my mind and just relax. Even when I got back to reading the book, it was not lost on me. The story was not lost on me. In fact, the story even became more interesting. Like guys, this is the book you should read. I'm going to rate this book five star yes i'm giving it five over five the book is that good so guys what are you waiting for if you've not read this book one thing i even had me thinking about this book is um you know i came on youtube and i was searching for other reviews about on um, black sister street by chica Munigwe, and i wasn't seeing a lot of it unlike other books you search for and you see that oh so many people have talked about it i wasn't seeing so much reviews on it i was like is it that people do not know about this book or what? Like guys, this book is very very interesting. This is a book you should read. You should read this book. It is so emotional. It is... I mean, the author did a lot. You know? In fact, the author did lovers of African literature a whole lot of good by focusing on this type of issue as a concise prostitution. And I just feel this is a book to read. 
and of course i love the fact that she also incorporated um this uh nigerian versus ghanaian jollof so between nigerians and ghanaians there's this debate about the country that has the best jollof rice for people who do not know what jollof rice is i'm going to add a picture of um, jollof rice so you see what it looks like but it's just rice cooked with um, tomato paste uh, you know seasoning like you go to any party in nigeria and the first thing they will serve is jollof rice you can never go wrong with jollof rice jollof rice is 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 awesome but now the thing is between nigerian jollof and ghanaian jollof which is the best so of course most nigerians will say of course it's nigerian jollof that is the best and why ghanaians will say no so nobody from either of the countries want to accept that um the other country is beating them hands down the only type of jollof rice i've eaten is nigerian jollof i've not eaten ghanaian jollof so i might as well maintain that nigerian jollof is the best i don't know make no come by to you all right guys that is it about this book so if you get to reading this book and you share some of my thoughts and opinions about this book please i would love to hear what you think about this book in the comment section down below so guys um do not forget to like this video um share this video with your friends and family and also subscribe so guys i'll see you in my very next video bye